Good morning YouTubers. Today I'm on Gilpin Street off Barker and Road in Bradford. Now I'm going to take you to an old Victoria building which is just down the corner and it used to be an old school, a Victorian school. I think it's apartments now and I'm going to meet Andrew Bolt. Now the building is just around the corner and we're going to talk about a young lady by the name of uh, Mary Ann Bailey and we'll take you back to the day of 23rd of February 1911 where a freak accident happened and at the end of the video we shall take you to the Undercliff Cemetery now if you like uh, quirky stories heritage and history of the Bradford district do consider subscribing and do like this video so this is a close-up of the uh, school itself good morning Andrew yeah, good morning. we have a fascinating story here which you dug out a while back yeah it's a story with a bit of a twist um, here we are in sort of Barker end area of Bradford yeah and to the side of us is uh, Hanson's School, formerly Hanson's, which is now um, a sort of apartment building. Right. Uh, lots of, uh, sort of houses in there. Um, the yeah. Absolutely gorgeous building. It's still got the old, you know, inscription. It says "Girls." Yeah. yeah. There. It was a, a board school. Um, right. And according to some of the, the details, I mean, I think it was about 1891. It was built. So it was uh, obviously a, a, a prime Victorian um, school site at the time. Right. Um, but we're, we're going to take you down a little bit of a, a strange story that's associated with the building and uh, the pupils that were here. Um, quite a few years ago now, I was uh, given this book and uh, it's the headmaster's uh, diary and register for the uh, for the school. This is the original book. The original book, handwritten by the headmaster. Yes, incredible. Um, as you can see, unfortunately, it got damaged many years ago. That looks a bit. Somebody's popped it open, but uh, you can see in here how it's been handwritten. Yeah. And what I thought we'd do is we'd give you a feel for what was happening at the school first, and then tell you this uh, bizarre story. Um, so, what I have is quite a few snippets that I've uh, taken out from various years. So, for example here, uh, an accident occurred in 1911 in the boys' upper yard. So this school was split into two, you had girls at one side, the boys at the other side. Um, Morris Shelton uh, lost one of his front teeth. And uh, it was investigated, and it was it was an accident. Okay, so right. Usual school stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, could happen any time, anywhere these days. Then you have sign of the times. So the next one is in 1911. The nurse from the office uh, spent the afternoon examining the heads of all the children for ringworm. Right. There were 349 children in, uh, examined. Um, total 349. Three to be excluded at once. Right. And two cases, uh, possibly later, there was one dirty head. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you get a feel for what Absolutely, the, the yeah. time, the conditions yeah. and yeah. everything. The next one is a little bit more sinister, unfortunately, but um, Annie Cooper obviously went off for a Christmas holiday break, but she never came back. And it says that unfortunately she died of diphtheria. Right. Again, yeah. you're talking about conditions and what it was like at them times. At the time, yeah, yeah. We move a bit further on, and a year after the incident we're going to talk about, this is this is fascinating because it, it talks of uh, a case of birds arrived today for the school use that remain there till the 30th. I have instructed the teachers to make a special lesson this afternoon of the solar eclipse that will take place tomorrow interesting 
But also, 1912 is famous for something else. Uh, also to explain the nature of the wreck of the Titanic and the locality. Wow. So that was written as it happened. As it happened. Uh, so the, like any natural disaster war yeah. or anything, yeah. kids would be spoken to about it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so they were doing it back then. You right. know, it, was, it was fresh off the press, that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fascinating stuff. Now, we move on a few years. Of course, you've got World War One. Right. And the children would help with the comfort funds for wounded soldiers. So soldiers would be coming back here and going up to St. Luke's Hospital, which was the war hospital then. And it just shows you things that they were being collecting. So they've got 190 eggs. Don't forget there's rationing. It's First World War, but they're still rationing. Um, 56 tins of fruit, 40 cigarettes, five tins of milk, sardines, tins of oxo and beans, seven cakes, three jars of jam, marmalade and some fruit. So they were actively getting things together right, for the, the troops. And one that will resonate with a lot of us, we're talking about 1918, and I'll just read this out. Received notice that the medical officer for Bradford has authorised all schools in Bradford to be closed from this afternoon until Monday, November the 18th. Schools remained closed until Monday, December the 9th, 1918. This is the epidemic of influenza. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> it does sound very familiar. So, a yeah. hundred years ago, they went through a very similar situation. Similar situation, as yeah. what we've all experienced. Yeah. Uh, slightly different, yeah. but with the same connotation. Yeah, same template, yeah. So that gives you a little bit of an insight to uh, the ins and outs of the school, right. really. I mean, this book is absolutely full of uh, little snippets uh, which tell yeah. the story. Now, have you, been, have, you, have you been through all this book, have you had a... Um, <coughs> kind of. I yeah. mean, there's a lot to digest, really, yeah. to do with yeah. the transcript. That's, but uh, yeah. the handwriting's beautiful, but some of it is extremely hard to hard read. Hard to read, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the junior school. Now, the girl we're going to speak about was actually from the uh, sort of the secondary school side of it. Right. She was, she was age 16. Yeah. She lived locally on Folkestone Street, which is just behind us. Uh, in the, the terraced area yeah and she kind of um, had a very unfortunate um, situation so we say so the headline in the newspaper in 1911 February was extraordinary death at Bradford schoolgirl killed by a whirlwind right now this was Mary Ann Bailey yeah 16 year old and she was out in the sort of playground area which is just behind us behind this building yeah behind just the school. behind this bit of fencing here right where it says girls yeah that's where she met her demise just there just there so just around this area yeah. that's incredible because he hasn't changed since has it well, as we'll see picture yeah, I, I hate to say X marks the spot. Yeah, so right. So that where it says girls, is that entrance where there? Girls and uh, girls. Exactly how it was then, yeah. Yeah. No different really. Now the next picture I show you is how the police gazette uh, sensationalised it to a point. Right. So what they thought had happened was that there was a gust of wind on a really stormy day that picked her up, she went 20 or 30 feet in the air and came down and landed on the the, the roadway right, beneath right. Uh, and tragically she died of her injuries right um, back then uh, you might say a year before the Titanic the clothing was different uh, so she was wearing a, quite a um, a dress that obviously as, it, as the wind caught it, right. it, it it says in yeah. the news that it blew up like a balloon yeah so she went straight up in the air and came back down yeah. 
Now, it's it's an interesting story because it's so it's like a freak accident. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and needs remembering because of course, yeah. Um, this is this is the sort of thing that gets lost yeah. in time. Yeah. So it. So sorry, uh, that picture you just showed us there. Those two. Yeah. I'm guessing this is where she. So they're estimating the, the height that the witnesses said that she went about 20, 20 feet, if not more, in the air. From there to there. Um, so yeah, dress petticoats just lifted her up. All right. So, so just to give a perspective, it's from yeah. there. And if you look up. Just, yeah, building, just about there. Yeah. Which is quite a height when you see it, it, it in it uh, in real life. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a fall. Yeah. Um, now, the newspapers, obviously. It went all over the country, to be honest with you. Yeah. But we did find an extract in the diary. So uh, they're on about bitter temperatures, weather that has uh, uh, been, no, it's been really bad as the weather at that time. The very violent wind was the cause of the death of a girl in the secondary department of the Hanson Group of Schools on Thursday a.m. on the 23rd, 23rd. of February. And this is from the diary. And so the, this, yeah. yeah, this is from the diary, and it's the day after it actually happened. Day after, yeah, it happened on the twenty third, didn't it? Yeah. Now the detail might be a little bit sort of uh, lacking in information yeah. because this was the junior school. So if there was a diary kept for the secondary school, it might have had more detail. But at least this is an actual footprint of what yeah. happened. It gives you that sort of personal feel to it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just an article being in a newspaper. You've got a headmaster's That's, diary there, yeah, you know what I mean? That is the, written the day after it happened. Yes, yeah, incredible. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it won't go into too much detail, but all these are um, in all the different newspapers all over the country because it's such a freak, freak accident. Yeah. Um, so you've got Yorkshire Schoolgirls' remarkable death. Again, how the press sensationalises yeah. things. Born into the air, girls shocking death. Mary Ann Bailey, A16, scholar at Hanson, higher grade school, lifted into the air. A uh, commercial traveller who was standing near the school, he said he saw the girl um, fully 20 feet up. Her skirts were blown out like a balloon and her arms were extended. Mm, yeah. So it all, you can see where they got the drawing from. Yeah. They've all been there. Uh, they, they have sensationalised, it's like Mary Poppins when you look is, at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> Uh, again, strange accident. So you've got coroner's inquest. It fell with a crash. Um, yeah, it, it was returned as accidental death. But at the time, there was a bit of um, a suggestion that did she commit suicide? Right. It was a twist in the story, really. Yeah. Because, as you can see right up there, the caretaker found one of the windows open. Right, okay. So there was a suggestion that actually, did she actually jump or was it the, the freak weather? Right. Now, the caretaker, as part of his witness statement, says he'd seen the girl walk past him and there was no way that she could have got that high in the short amount of time. Short amount of time, yeah. He turned round and heard that the commotion, something had happened. Right. And he'd only just seen her. Yeah. So it, it was dismissed as yeah, suicide yeah. Uh, and looked at. As a, as a freak accident right um, so yeah uh, spectators evidence again you see there was a commercial traveller there was the caretaker uh, and they all said the same thing about seeing a clothing yeah yeah so she got a concussion of the brain compound fractures of the lower jaw right arm wrist and thigh so the verdict of death from a fall caused by the wind was returned Absolutely amazing. So, uh, yeah, Mary Ann Bailey, that was the unfortunate uh, yeah. what happened. Yeah. So what we'll do next is uh, we'll go to the Undercliff Cemetery and see if we can look, locate the resting place of Mary Ann Bailey. But before we go, can we just move further down and have a look at this side elevation? Of course. If you dig that. It, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it is. Fine. Because it, it's just interesting to see it that side by side yeah now it is a bit tricky we've got the fence in front of us and that's the bar up there so that's the uh, kind of an extension protruding out yeah 
Ah, done. Might be able to put your hand through the fence in there, it might uh, look better there you go. So yeah, just outside the doorway there, that's where uh, she fell to her death. And that's that bit there. Nothing's changed, has no, it? No, it's not, apart from the lamps missing. Right. <laughs> No, thanks very much for that, Andrew. All these little um, artifacts, well, these little props and uh, yeah. articles really puts a, a human touch to it. it certainly does, and yeah. Um, yeah, it's just remembering somebody that's been forgotten about. Yeah. But with a bit more detail, like I say, she, she only lived on Folkestone Street, yeah. which is yeah. just over, over that way, beyond the church here. Yeah. There's uh, row after row of terraced houses, right. and it still stands today. Right, so Barkren does get busy, so let's get out of here. So we've just arrived at the Undercliff Cemetery and we're at the area of the cemetery where we believe Mary Ann Bailey is buried. Now, as you can see, this area is pretty overgrown and uh, Andrew's already in there having a look. I feel like Indiana Jones in this one. <laughs> right, what's the uh, location number? L90 is it? L90, yeah, which uh, I don't know, it might it's still be even further back. Right, and uh, have you found a number on any of these uh, stones? What there's we... one by, there's an owner one there, which uh, on the other side of that. Yeah, this one here. Yeah. We're at 200 and something on that Right, one. yeah. So this is the battle they've got. We want to show you, it's how we find. Yeah. Uh, not impossible, but... We don't want to end up disappearing down in here. Absolutely. Just pan across, it gives you an idea where the resting place may be, but we suspect it's across there. It's a case of being careful and getting close to some of the numbers on the uh, stones. I'm surprised this area is uh, slightly cleaner. Right. Are we any closer to the number or well out? Right. Higher. It could be across there. Right. Yeah, a war grave there. So now we're in K. So we're definitely over there then. Right. <laughs> oh look where it's taken us. On the boundary wall. That is weird. Yeah, there's a boundary wall there. And we've just come through that area there. L. Right. We're getting close. We're, get, we're getting thicker as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
L54. Right, and we're looking L55. at 90. Right. Oh. Fingers crossed, let's hope it's at the edge. So, Andrew, it looks like uh, we've found the spot, but look at it. Yeah. Unless we can get in from the other side um, or have a machete. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I thought the other area was bad, but this is no chance. I mean, fair play to the uh, volunteers here to keep up to this, because, yeah, wow, yeah, it's, uh, it's almost jungle-like yeah. places. Um, yeah. So we believe she's buried somewhere across there, but have you got any funeral information of what happened at the end of the day? Oh, well, yeah. Um, I searched for a while to see if I could find out the actual funeral um so i don't know if you can see that so we have uh, the gale victim's funeral the funeral of the young schoolgirl mary ann bailey who was lifted off her feet by a gust of wind at the hansen schools on thursday and sustained fatal injuries in her fall it took place at undercliff cemetery on saturday Prior to the interment, the Reverend W. E. Laidman officiated at a service at St. Margaret's Church at which attended the teachers of the school and a number of students. The wreaths on the coffin included one from the girls of the whole school, one from the girls' companions and one from the teachers. And that kind of uh, all happened here yeah. in this area. Um, which is a bit unfortunate, yeah. but uh, it will eventually become clear, I'm sure, yeah, uh, yeah. for another day. To, to Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So a big thank you to Andrew for showing some uh, news articles, even the, the diary of the headmaster that apologise for not actually showing the grave of Mary Ann Bailey, because as you can see, it's overgrown. But most importantly, I hope you enjoy the video. Do drop us a comment because we like to know whether you like these type of films, these type of stories of the Bradford district because we've got loads that we can actually <coughs> talk about on film. But uh, thanks for watching. And until next time, peace out.